Hello, in this video, I want to take a look at the Tableau Metadata API. The Tableau Metadata API is a fairly new API. It was released um, at the back end of 2019. And in this video, I want to take a quick look at uh, what this API is, what you can do with it. Uh, we're going to talk about a thing called GraphQL, and we're going to see how we can connect to the API and get some data out of it. So first of all, I'm here on the documentation page of the Metadata API, uh, which is can be found on the help section of the main Tableau website. And uh, here it says what we can do with the Tableau Metadata API. First of all, it's part of the Tableau catalog. And the Tableau catalog is, um, well, it's part of the data management add-on. Now, you can use the Metadata API without um, having purchased the uh, data management um, add-on. So you can just use the Metadata API as, as you want it. Uh, you don't get a catalog, of course. Um, the catalog is uh, powered by this Metadata API. And uh, what this Metadata API allows you to do is, as the documentation says, it allows you to uh, discover data. It allows you to track a lineage, um, so the relationship between different assets, uh, workbooks on your server. Um, for example, here it says identify which workbooks use a specific published data source. So get a better overview of uh, what is being used where. And also impact analysis. Now, impact analysis is an interesting one because uh, what you could potentially do is, for example, if you down or you remove a uh, calculation from a published data source, which workbooks will be impacted by that uh, deletion? Or you could even go as far as um, filtering to all the um, all the calculations that contain user filters, um, and then you can see like, oh, what's going to change if we if we make some. Um, uh, or if we delete something here. So that's kind of interesting. So you get discover the data, track lineage, and perform impact analysis. Now we have different types of metadata in Tableau. Um, so we have, um, let me see, uh, we have some more information there as well. Um, so we have Tableau data, there we go. Yeah, so uh, we have general Tableau content. So that means data sources, workbooks, sheets. So all kinds of things that you, you kind of use in Tableau Desktop and which you publish to Tableau Server. But then we also have Tableau Online and specific content. So this goes around the number of sites that you have in a server, the projects that live within those sites, uh, users that are on the server, uh, which users own which workbooks, for example, but also things like the data quality warnings and messages. Now, you probably think, hey, I can get some of these also through the Postgres database, um, which is correct. Uh, the Postgres database, however, doesn't give you all of this. Uh, on top of that, the um, Postgres database is, well, it's a database. So that means that you need to do sometimes fairly complex uh, joins between tables and multiple joins between multiple tables in order to get to um, the information that you're interested in. Now, the third type of content that we have on a, a in the Metadata API is external assets. And those external assets are, for example, your databases, um, those, so the connections to those databases, but also web data connectors. Also, you can query for uh, tables within those databases. Okay, So what is interesting about this new Metadata API, and I mentioned it in the introduction, is that it uses a thing called GraphQL. Now, if you've used Tableau's REST API, Tableau's REST API has lots and lots of what we call endpoints. And these endpoints allow you to perform certain tasks like uh, query users on the server, delete a user, uh, find a workbook. And those are all individual queries you send to the API. Now, what you can do with GraphQL, and GraphQL is a query language, and it was built by um, the team at Facebook, and it's a, an open source um, uh, query language. It allows you to actually describe the data that you want, and you then exactly get that data back. 
And how you write that data and the actual request is in JSON. So here we can see in the main GraphQL website is that um, on the second uh, tab here, ask for what you want. And we want, in this case, this is from the website of GraphQL, we want the tagline. Now the tagline we can see here, a query language for your API. Now we get that exact, exactly how we specified we get the data back. So that is really useful because you ask for the data and you know exactly how you're getting it back because you specify it. Um, whilst with REST APIs, you often need to read uh, lots of documentation and need to understand um, how the data is being returned to you. Um, also, what we know with GraphQL is that the data comes back in a JSON format, which is fairly easy to work with um, as well. Now, if we scroll a little bit further on this website, um, we can see that in this case, uh, we get some interactive um, GIF here that says, um, this is looking at the Star Wars API, and they're basically looking for a hero in the Star Wars universe. And in this case, they want the name. You then get the name. If you type in the height, you get also the height of the people and also the mass. Now, what that means is that you are not making any unnecessary calls to an API. With REST APIs, you're only limited to the data that you get back from the user. Now, this often means that you have to make multiple what they call trips to the API. So you can say in this case, for example, you would get the name of the hero followed by the height. And then you could say in which movies does this particular hero star. So all of this takes place in one single request, which makes it really, really easy to work with. Now, um, you probably think, how can I work with this in uh, Tableau? Now, first of all, you need to have Tableau Server or Tableau Online on version 2019.3 or later. Um, and you need to be a server or site admin to be able to work with this API. Now, in this example, in, in this video, I'm going to look at uh, Tableau Online. And I'm using my free developer site on, um, on Tableau Online. And the Metadata API is by default enabled on Tableau Online. If you want to enable it on Tableau Server, what you need to do is um, there is some information here. I think maybe it's under getting started. Yeah, so you need to enable it for Tableau Server. So that means you need to run a TSM command, TSM maintenance metadata service enable. That will enable it for you. And then you can find there's a, a link under the resources page in Tableau Server. And um, what this gives you is a thing called graph equal. So it's not GraphQL, it's graphical. And graphical is an interface for you to write your queries to this API. Now, how we can actually access that in uh, Tableau Online is by going to the URL. And in the URL, what we want to do is we want to remove the site name, and in this case, my uh, development uh, site. And I'm going to say metadata slash graphical. And what that will do is it will send you to this particular interface. And this is the graphical interface for Tableau Metadata API. And what you'll see is if you start working with more GraphQL-based APIs is that you always get access to this type of interface. And this type of interface, what it has on the left-hand side, is where you can write your queries. On the right-hand side, you'll see a result. We also have on the top kind of an execution button. If you're familiar with Alteryx, then you know that you can just hit the Run button and it will work. Um, we also have a, a history button. So if I click on that, you can see some of the queries that I've run. And what is really good about the Metadata API, but about any API that uses GraphQL, is that it has inbuilt documentation. So what you can see here, this, the root entry of this GraphQL API is called query. And within query, we can then fetch any of the kind of resources that are underneath this. But you can see this is a whole list. And what is really good is that the documentation is already in this graphical. That means that you can inspect the schema and how the API is structured. So let's first take a look at um, how to write a query. 
Now we start writing a query with typing in query and you can see there's autocomplete here. And we then use these um, kind of curly braces, the mustachios. And then we, for example, want to find all the kind of um, Tableau users on the server. And what we want from them is their ID. Okay, so I'm here specifying and let me make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Here we have the Tableau users and their ID. So if I now hit run, what I'll get is, as is expected, a JSON response with the data, Tableau users, and then the ID. Now, because I'm using Tableau online and I'm using my free developer account, which means that I have uh, only one user here, but I specify to get back ID. So I'm getting back ID here. Now, if we do something similar, if I start looking for the Tableau user here, we can see what other properties or fields I can get back. Now, ID here has an exclamation mark, um, which means that it's, um, in this case, it's a, it's a unique identifier. Um, and what I can do is, for example, I can say, actually, let's get the username as well. And if I then hit run again, you'll see that it now also gets the username. So that is my, my email address in this case. Now, if we look a little bit further, what we can see is say owned data sources. So what I could do is in for all of the, the users on the server, what I could see, I could go to my owned workbooks, owned data sources. So let's go to the workbooks actually. And then we need a curly brace again. And then we can say, give me the ID of the owned workbooks. Hit run and you can see this is all the workbooks that this particular user owns. Now, if you had multiple users on the Tableau server, this would list out multiple users and multiple workbooks. You can then, of course, also get the name and also kind of the project in which they are based. So you can then see that I have a project called development. I have the default. And for example, this is um, a workbook that I have around my Google Analytics, which sits in my uh, website project. Okay. So it's a, it's a really interesting way of, of getting data and understanding um, your, um, your Tableau server. Now, what we're writing here is query followed by all these kind of breakdown of the fields. But, and every time we run it, it runs this particular query. Now, what I'd like to do is actually specify some queries so we can have multiple listed here. So I'm just going to call this um, users and content. And what I can now also do is, for example, um, take a look at some other queries. So I can say, for example, query get workbooks. And what that means is now I can say get the ID, um, sorry, for the workbooks, I want the workbooks, then I want the idea and the name. So now if I click on the run button, or the execution button, I can select which query I want to run. So I can then say query get workbooks. And now I get all of the workbooks. Now I can also, uh, for example, um, look for upstream or downstream data sources. In this case, I could say uh, upstream data sources, and then I could get the net, the idea and the actual name. So let's see if any of my workbooks. Yeah. So here we can see I have a workbook, measles analysis workbook, which uses a data source called measles. Okay. So from the upstream data sources. Now. I could also go into all the fields that are within that particular data source. And then I can see name. And I can also even if they've been referenced by calculations. So if I then hit run for get workbooks, you can see that now within this measles data source, I have year, column, row, week. Those are my actual um, fields in the data source. And now you can see if they have actually been referenced by calculations. Now, here, for example, in the uh, sample superstore, there is a profit field, which is being used in this particular calculation. Now, let's take a look at that calculation. Um, the actual name, and if we then hit run, we scroll a little bit further, we can see that profit ratio is a calculation that uses profit. And I think if I go down to sales, 
exactly yet. This is also being referenced in there. So this is a great way to understand um, kind of the impact analysis. What is going to happen if I remove uh, a field from a particular data source? Now you can do all kinds of things in here. We're now getting back all of the data. I could also put in some filters. So if I say, for example, here we have a, um, a workbook with this particular ID. If I grab that ID and in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's filter. And I filter the ID and the ID needs to be this one. Okay, so if I now run get workbooks, what you'll see is that it's only returning the data for this particular workbook. Okay. So what I would suggest um, doing as well is to uh, go over this um, explorer. You can find lots and lots of information here. And what you've seen is that you don't really need to understand, or you need to understand, of course, in this case, how Tableau works, but um, you can send queries and you can look for these. So what you can do is you can look for tables and data sources. Uh, you can even look for custom SQL. What that means is you can even check the custom SQL. Is it correct? Um, and we've already looked at calculated fields, but you can do a lot more, like uh, seeing if they've been using uh, user filters. Um, now, all of this is available um, if you're a, a Tableau server admin or a site admin on Tableau online. And it works from um, Tableau version 2019.3. What I am doing is I am using a free Tableau online site. And you can also have your free Tableau online site if you join the Tableau developer program. This is a free program and gives you a lots and lots of um, free um, access to the Tableau developers. So first of all, you're being added to a Slack channel um, in which you can directly chat with them. You also get a free developer site, so that's this one. Um, and you're being invited to um, monthly um, uh, webinars where they share ideas and show examples of uh, what's um, possible and what is coming uh, with, um, with Tableau in, in the Tableau developer space. You can sign up um, by um, going to, and I should have opened this, but um, if you go to the Tableau developer program, it's at tableau.com slash developer. And what you can then do is you can sign up here somewhere. Yeah, here, sign up, join now, and you will get access to it um, after um, probably a few minutes. Um, yeah, so hopefully um, you enjoyed this little introduction to the Tableau Metadata API, and I'll see you in the next video.